Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio. I am Dr. Simi Bhagat. With me, I have another expert, Ms. Sarika Agarwal. Today, we are here to discuss with you some of the most basic and commonly used stitches of embroidery. These stitches have been used for many centuries all over the world. However, the changing fashion scene influences the way in which they are used. All basic embroidery stitches are easy. Several basic stitches can be combined to produce a rich embroidered piece. In this session, we are going to learn some of the simplest stitches used in embroidery. And before we start, so let's see the embroidery definition. We all know embroidery is the art of creating decorative designs on the surface of the fabric using stitches that can be made with the help of needle and thread. Through careful selection of design, embroidery stitches and colors, a very striking effect can be created on the fabric. Before starting the embroidery, remember to have a complete embroidery kit which should contain all the necessary materials and equipment required for doing the embroidery. We will decide on the type of fabric on which embroidery has to be done and it will be dependent on the use for which we are doing the embroidery. There are variety of fabrics which are available in the market. Let us now see what all are required. So before starting, we should have a complete embroidery kit which will include thread, scissor, pencil, any marking other equipment which is required. You have an embroidery frame, embroidery needles, pin cushion, carbon paper, common pins, beads, sequins and tape if it is required. So we can use different type of fabrics on which embroidery can be done. We have cotton in different weights. So we have malmal which is very light, medium weight cotton, a little heavy fabric can be khadar, Then we have wool on which we can do embroidery, silk and organdy. And there could be other materials like linen, the suti, felt etc. Once the fabric is decided, the design is selected that suits our requirement. And we did it in the last session where various types of motifs can be picked up. So they can be geometric, they could be simplified, they could be natural, they could be stylized or abstract designs. After selection of designs, we look at the colors. So colors we know can be primary, secondary or tertiary. Some can be warm colors, some can be cool colors or they could be neutrals. Other thing which is required for embroidery is the thread. So thread effect actually depends on the final look which we have to achieve. We can have cotton thread, we can have silk threads. Now everything is ready for us to do the embroidery. Before actually starting the embroidery, first and foremost thing is to keep the hands very clean. Because we sweat, we have oils in our hands, so it is important that we wash our hands and clean them before starting any embroidery. So colors we have discussed, we could have primary colors, secondary colors, tertiary colors. You all know about the color wheel. You can pick up neutral colors. So they will help you in deciding the effect of the embroidery. Threads can be metallic colors. They could be silken, they could be cotton. So according to the final look, you can decide. So now all things are ready for starting the embroidery. So let's see how we begin the embroidery. We never start embroidery with a knot. We have to start embroidery with a back stitch. So let's see, Sarika is going to show us how we start with the embroidery. So we take a design on the fabric and we have put the fabric into a frame. Now I have a needle which has been threaded and it, there is no knot at the end as you can see here. So we will take the back stitch on the front side of the fabric only. So we just pick up a yarn from the fabric, pull the thread through 
and then again just another yarn at the same place we pick it up and we put the needle through that. Now we are ready to start the embroidery and as you can see there is no knot at the back. So now you have seen Sarika has just started the embroidery using a back stitch and you must be wondering why it is called a back stitch because the stitch was moving in the backward direction and it does not give any untidiness at the back. So it is a very strong stitch which is used to start the embroidery work as it prevents knotting of thread at the starting point. It is also an easy embroidery stitch that forms lines and are most often used to outline the shapes. Sarika has shown you the process. Okay, now to achieve the best look, make sure that the stitches are small, evenly placed and regular. When working a sharply curved line, you have to see that stitches should be very small so that curve flows. There should not be any sharp angles. Be sure to place each stitch in the same hole at the end of the preceding one. Stitch should look like a machine stitching. Sometimes while working on the embroidery, you may notice that the thread twists and knots are formed. So in that case, you have to turn the needle in the opposite direction till the thread is smooth. In case the thread does not run smoothly, it will be better to use a fresh length of the thread. This is how the back stitch looks like. Once you have put together a complete embroidery kit, decided on the fabric, design and colors for the embroidery threads, you are ready to begin with the embroidery. Now we are starting with the basic embroidery stitches. Let's understand what is the classification of the stitches. So they are classified into different families. Each family has its own basic motion. We have straight stitches, we have back stitches, we have chain stitches, buttonhole or blanket stitches, cross stitch and knotted stitches. So just look at this chart which includes all the stitches which are categorized, categorized under basic embroidery stitches. So we have straight stitches, under that there is satin and darning stitch. Back stitches include stem stitch and long and short stitch. Chain stitch includes basic chain stitch and lazy daisy stitch. Buttonhole or blanket stitch, knotted stitches are French knot and bullion stitch and cross stitch includes cross stitch and herringbone stitch. So this is a ready reference to understand what are the basic embroidery stitches. Now moving to each one, stem stitch is basically an outline stitch that makes a fine line. In this, the needle is inserted to the right of the line and brought up to the left of the line making a thick outline. The stitch is most frequently used for narrow, curving lines for making veins in leaves, stems etc. It may be used as a filling by working rows alongside each other. So you can see one of the sample over here, Sarika. This is how the sample of stem stitch looks like. And if you see the back side of the sample, it is a row of back stitches. So Sarika will now just show you how a stem stitch is worked upon. You have seen the final look of the sample from both front and back side. So now Sarika will show us how this stitch is performed. So as we have just learned that we, whenever we start embroidery, we never started with a knot and we always started with a back stitch. Uh, we have already done a back stitch here as I had just demonstrated. Now we'll start with the stem stitch. So if you see here, we go from right to left. So I insert the needle at a certain distance and then take out the needle forward and take the stitch. Now I go towards the left. Again I insert the needle and take it out from the hole of the previous thread. So you can see how a stem stitch is formed. 
So we are moving from right to left. Here we have used three strands of embroidery thread. You can use a single or a double strand or even more than that depending upon the kind of look you want. So we are repeating the same steps again and again. Come to the left, insert the needle and take it out from the hole of the previous thread. So as you can see, the stem stitch looks like this. You have already seen the look of the final sample. It has been done with, the, with double threads. So the lines are slightly thinner. Okay, now we see the second stitch. So this is a satin stitch. It is basically a filling stitch. The thread is taken out in front and back equally. It gives a very smooth finish to the embroidery. These are straight stitches worked slantwise. And for straight areas, you work slantwise from top to bottom. And for a small circle, you work into long stitches vertically. Center first, then fill each side equally. For leaf shape, you can work diagonally starting from the left edge. So we can see over here, in the satin stitches, the stitches are worked evenly and closely together and it is very useful for solid fillings. Now I'll request Sarika to show you the demonstration as well as the sample of the satin stitch. So this is the final look of satin stitch. As you can see that the long stitches that can be seen in front can also be seen at the back. Now we will just have a look how it is done. So I have already taken a back stitch to start and I just take out the needle from the point from where we want to start the embroidery. Now go down on the design lines and then again take out the needle from the very next point in front of the fabric. Don't pull the thread too hard otherwise it will not give the right effect. Now again with this thread we take the needle down and bring it up again from the very next yarn. If the design is too large, then satin stitch is not recommended because very long floats are not recommended as they have a, they will uh, snag. Make sure that the design that is selected for satin stitch, it should not be very large. Otherwise, the long floats will have a tendency to snag. So we have done one leaf here and you can see that this is how it comes. This is the front and same back. Okay, so you have seen now how the satin stitch is done. Let's look at the next one. So which is a long and short stitch. This is also in the same category. So it is also used to fill areas in solid and shaded colors. The first row is alternating long and short stitches. The following rows are stitches of equal length which are worked in ends of short and long stitches. Regularity of the following rows depends on the shape, of shape to be filled. Here also the needle works equally in front and back of the fabric. So we have to plan the stitches in an area so they fit and fill it naturally and gracefully. It is helpful to mark with pencil the direction of the stitches. So I will now request Sarika to show you these stitches. You can see how they are to be filled and the final look. 
So Sarika, can you please show the final sample and how the stitches worked? So this is the final look of the long and short stitch. As you can see that all the stitches are not of the same length here. Some are long and some are short and so is the name of the stitch. This is the front and this is the back of the sample. Now we will see how it can be made. So I have already taken a back stitch to start the embroidery and now the first row as you have been just told that the first row will be a series of long and short stitch. So we will first take a long stitch and we will work on the design lines. The next stitch will be a shorter one. The technique of doing the long and short embroidery is absolutely similar to that of doing the satin stitch. The only difference is the length of the stitches. Now we will take a long stitch and again we will take a short stitch. So long and short, long and short. This is how we are supposed to fill the first row. Make sure that you work closely, otherwise gaps will be shown in the embroidery. So this is how it looks. Thank you Sarika. Now we will move to the next category. So we have the chain stitches. This stitch appears like a chain on the face of the fabric and a line of back stitches at the back. Bring the needle up through the fabric. Hold the loop with your thumb and insert the needle again at the same point. Bring the needle up a short distance away and the thread looped under the needle and keep repeating. It is also used for heavy outlines or as a filling, making rows of chain following the outline of the shape which is being filled. So we can see these samples over here now and Sarika will again show us the demo of the stitch. This is how the sample looks from front and back side. Let's quickly look at the stitch how it is performed. So we start with a back stitch like any other embroidery. Now keeping the thread forward we will Insert the needle from a point and take it out at a distance which decides the length of the loop. So, as you can see a loop is formed. Now again insert the needle from the same point and take it out in the forward direction. As you can see that the needle passes through the loop which has been formed by the thread. So this is how the loops are formed. Thank you Sarika. This is a very simple stitch as we have seen. So another one which is very similar to this one is lazy daisy stitch. This stitch also consists of a single loop of chain. Then the continuous chain pattern hence is called the detached chain stitch because it is moving to the next one. Make a chain stitch then make a tiny stitch to hold the loop down. Leave the space and bring the needle out again to begin to make a new stitch. It is used often to make small flowers or petals or raindrops etc. You can see over here how the lazy daisy, the same type of stitch in chain is forming the flowers and also raindrops. Show you how to make a lazy daisy stitch. So this is exactly the same how we do the chain stitch. It is exactly done in the same way. The only difference is that it is a detached loop. So at one time you will make only one loop and secure it by inserting the needle down. 
Again, we take out from the next position where we want the next loop and make another loop. So here, detached loops are formed rather than a continuous chain. So I think it is very clear. Sarika has very patiently shown us these stitches. So let's move on to the next one now. So now we have a darning stitch. Another name which means actually darning, which is mending also. So over here, it is also used as a filling stitch where the stitch is visible only on the face of the fabric. The needle is taken out in front, one float is taken, then the needle goes down and is taken out from the back through the very next yarn in the same row. Here only the front has floats. So you can see in the embroidery, we can see in the sample and we can also see in this demonstration. So here is a sample which shows the front and the back so this is a darning stitch with front and back and now I'll request Sarika can show us how the stitch is done. So we will now do the darning stitch and it is important for you to remember that this is always done on the wrong side of the fabric so that the floats are formed on the front side. I have already made a, a back stitch to start with and then just take the needle down and bring it up from the other end depending upon the design. Now we will again take the next yarn on the same line, go down and come back on the other side. We will keep on repeating the same thing unless we are done with the design. So as you can see a dotted line is formed at the back and when you will see in the front, it will give the effect of a filling satin stitch. Thank you so much Sarika. So this embroidery, you know, is very interesting. It is also used for making fulkari. So now the next basic stitch is herringbone. Herringbone is also called machli tanka in Hindi. It is work between the lines from left to right. Bring the thread up through the lower line Insert the needle in the upper line a little to the right and take a short stitch to the left. Insert the needle on lower line a little to the right and take a short stitch to the left. It is used for making borders, edging, thick seams or to connect two solid areas for softening the effect. You can see over here how the herringbone stitch looks like. So over here the working is shown and you can see the front and the back side of the herringbone stitch in the pattern. So I'll now request Sarika to show you how the stitch is performed. We start with a back stitch and keeping the thread towards yourself, take a small notch on the upper line. Now we come back to the lower line and take a small notch here. You will see that a pattern of crosses will be formed. And this is how the stitch will progress. This is the final sample. The embroidery will look like this. And at the back you will get a look like this. After herringbone, let's see the next stitch that is the buttonhole stitch. It is also called the blanket stitch. It is work from left to right. So over here, we bring the needle up through the fabric, holding the thread under the left thumb, you form a loop, then pass the needle through the fabric and over the loop thread, you repeat. This stitch is most commonly used for making buttonhole edging or buttonhole wheels. So we'll see how this, is, this stitch is performed. So over here, you can see, it is done in this particular slide, you can see step one, two and three where a whole wheel is made in buttonhole and over here the same stitch buttonhole is used for doing the edging which is mostly done on the blanket so that is why the name blanket stitch. This particular slide shows the pattern which is done using the buttonhole stitch or the blanket stitch. So now I would request Sarika to show us how this stitch is done. 
So while making a pinwheel, we start from the center. We I have taken a back stitch here and then keeping the thread in front of the needle, again insert the needle at the center point and take it out. And a loop is formed. So when while making a pinwheel, the center remains the same and the stitch is repeated. So this is how the stitch is done. This can also be used for making the edgings. So as you can see in the sample, pinwheels and the edging. So after seeing this, thank you Sarika. This is a beautiful piece which has been made using buttonhole or blanket stitch. It can be moving in curves or it can be moved into circle. So now let's move on to the next basic stitch which is a cross stitch. These are stitches which form crosses on the face of the fabric. They are worked from top to bottom. With the needle pointing left, make a row of small horizontal stitches spaced as far apart as they are long. Pull the thread firmly. This produces diagonal floats between stitches. When the row is finished, reverse working stitches from bottom to top. Still, with your needle pointing left, thread floats should always cross in the middle forming an X or the cross. So you can see in the sample over here, so front side you see crosses, on the back side it could be either horizontal lines or it could be vertical lines depending on how you start this. You can very beautifully fill in the motives with this embroidery. Let's see how Sarika shows us the cross stitch. So I've taken a back stitch here. Now we go diagonally to the square and I take out my needle from the adjacent square. Again we go diagonal, take it out diagonal from the next square and this can go on depending upon how many crosses we want. Now we will first finish the crosses. So this is how we will come back. You can see a row of X's on the face of the fabric. Thank you so much Sarika. Now let's move on to the next one which is a French knot. Now for making a French knot, bring the needle through the right side of the fabric. Take the working thread in your left hand and wind it twice round the needle. It could be twice or thrice. So you can see, you know, how big a knot has to be made. Then still holding the thread firmly in the left hand, insert the needle into the fabric close to where it came up. Bring the needle up in position for the next stitch. A double thread may be used to make larger knot if desired. French knots are used to make dots. You fill eyes, you can fill up leaves, you can also make the center of the flower. As you can see in the sample, so this is how a French knot is made where the needle is taken, you wind the thread and you make beautiful dots. Now I'll request Sarika to show you how a French knot is made. So we start with a back stitch. And now I pick up a small notch from the fabric, wind the thread twice or thrice and take out the needle from the loops and just insert the needle there itself. So you can see this is how a notch is formed. Thank you Sarika. So now we move on to the next one which is very similar to the French knot, it is known as bullion knot. Only difference is it is an elongated knot that gives an embossed look. You have a short bullion stitches which are sometimes called bullion knots. For making a bullion stitch, bring the thread from the back of the fabric and insert the needle a short space away pointed towards the place that the thread emerges from the fabric. The distance between the two points determines the length of the knot. Twist thread round the needle point as many times as needed to fill the length. So it can even go up to seven or eight times, very similar to the French knot and then you bring back. So now we'll see how this particular stitch is done. So over in steps you can see over here. So the elongated ones are bullion and the red dots which you see in the sample, they are the French knots. So now let's see how Sarika is doing the 
will you not? So the stitch is similar to a French knot. The only difference is that here elongated look is obtained whereas in case of a French knot we have a dot. The technique is the same as we did the French knot but here the winding of thread is more. So you can wind the thread depending upon the length you want. The, the loops are formed and you have to then bring the needle towards yourself as you can see and then insert the needle to finish. So this is how the elongated stitches obtain. Thank you so much Sarika. So these are all the basic stitches which we have done. Very interesting stitches which can create beautiful embroideries. So now let us see since once we have understood all the embroidery stitches how to finish the final product. So for that you have to make sure that finishing is equally given importance. So we have to see that the embroidery which we have done is looking very neat and clean. So for that we have to make sure that the following points have to be considered. One that we do not end the embroidery in a big knot. So it is very important to see that the article is finished very well. We need to see that the embroidery on the back is finished with backstitch, not with a big knot. You will clip the extra threads at the back. It has to be washed or dry cleaned after the embroidery is done. Starching if the fabric is very flimsy and then it requires to be ironed well. Finish the edges of the article appropriately and if the article is heavily embroidered, you need to store after folding in a malmal cloth. Once we have observed all these points for taking care of our embroidered article, our article is ready to be used. So I would like to thank Sarika for doing such beautiful presentation of the stitches and I hope you all learners have also understood the stitches very well. And we thank you for giving your time. Thank you learners.